So welcome to the house of God. No matter what you come from and out there, we are all the same of children of God. And I was remember reminding you guys our preaching for today is Lamanu Petelov. I read and read the gospel and I thought it was quite straightforward. And um, so I thought that I will take it from the epistle of uh, Paul to the Galatians, chapter 6, verses 4. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. And the title is Boasting That Saves. Like the key verse, the wording is uh, different according to the, the versions of the Bible that we, that we read. And in, um, in the James uh, version, it reads, But God forbid that I should glory, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. There is something curious about boasting, mm -hmm. despite the fact that nobody like a braggart, but everybody brags anyway. People boast about anything and everything. Their grandchildren, their bank accounts, travel plans, their accomplishments, sometimes even their indiscretions. Recently, a most outlandish boast appeared on television. Commercials involve a fair amount of bragging, anyway. But this one reached new low in advertising. An automobile company proudly announced its most impressive safety advance ever, a car that can save your soul. How can a car save our souls? Can you do that? That's exceptional boasting. God forbid. The Apostle Paul never would have boasted about an automobile or anything else by that matter, for that matter. He wrote in Galatians, our verse for today, May I never boast, for be it from me to make a boast, or more literally, God forbid that I should ever boast. Since uh, Paul was a scholar in the Old Testament, he knew that the Bible forbids boasting. This is what the Lord says. According to the prophet Jeremiah 9.23, let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches. If a man cannot boast about his brain power, his muscle power, or his buying power, what can he boast about? Nothing at all. King Solomon wisely gave his best warning in Proverbs 27 too. In other words, let someone else blow your horn. <coughs> Boasting is never attractive. The worst kind of all is bragging about one's religious accomplishment. Yet, that is exactly what some people were doing in the days of Paul. Many of the first Christians were Jews by birth, so they had been circumcised in their infancy. Circumcision was the Old Testament sign of belonging to God's people. Even circumcision was still a requirement for salvation. Anyone who wants to become a true follower of Jesus Christ also has to get circumcised in the Old Testament fashion. There are only two religions in the world, the religion of human achievement and the religion of divine accomplishment. One is the religion of salvation by works. The other is the religion of salvation by faith. One depends upon what man does and the other depends on what God. 
did. Now of these two religions, most of the world is banking on the religion of human achievement. Most of the world is banking on the possibility that man can reach the highest plane of potential destiny by his own good deeds, by his own activity, on his own merit. Now you say, well, John, how could you say there's only two religions in the world when there are so many? No, there are only two. It's just that one category of them comes under so many different board names. The religion of human achievement comes in many, many forms, but it is the same religion. You see, there's a basic conflict involved in the whole structure of the universe that first became apparent in the fall of Lucifer, and it hasn't changed. Satan himself, when he was Lucifer, the highest of the angels, wanted to be higher than God. And he determined that by self-effort, he would become equal to God. And so the conflict began. He invented, at that point, the whole religion of self-effort. Immediately when God created men on the earth, Satan passed on the religion of self-effort. And the first one to be involved in it was Eve. And Eve was induced to want to be like God. And Satan told her a simple effort on her part would make it so. All she had to do was disobey God and eat of the food and it would happen. And she did and it didn't happen. And then there was Cain. Cain, instead of coming to God on the basis of God's standards, decided that he would bring to God the sacrifice of that which he had produced. Again, the religion of self-effort. Satan did it. Eve did it. Adam did it. Cain did it. And God rejected them every time. He threw Satan out of heaven, threw even Adam out of the garden, and he spurned and rejected the offering of Cain. And it is the very same religion going on today. You either accept what God has provided for salvation, or you endeavor to provide something of your own. Those are the, the only two religions that exist. Satan is going on and on with the same old stuff. You are okay on your own. You can do it. You don't need a savior, etc., etc. God refused Satan's system when he introduced it and kicked him out of heaven. God refused it when Adam and Eve offered it up and kicked them out of the Garden of Eden. And God refused it from Cain. And he's still refusing the system that says you can save yourself or your good deeds will reach God. That is why boasting on the things of this world will get you nowhere. You can't save yourself. Your good deed will not be recognized. Now clearly the New Testament boils down to this. You either accept the finished work of Christ on the cross or you do not accept it. That's the whole issue. For many walk, of whom I told you often, and now I tell you weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. That's from the scriptures. Now notice anybody who is in opposition to the cross will end in destruction. Jesus said, you are either for me, or what? Or against me. And all of those who are the enemies of the cross, their end is destruction. There are only two systems in the world. Point one is works, glorifying in the flesh. Point two is faith, glorifying in the cross. So Paul says, first of all, there's a kind of religion, a kind that glories in the flesh, a kind that praises in itself. Glory to me in the highest. That's a religion of human achievement. You can do it on your own. You can do good deeds. 
you can earn God's favor. That's the belief. Paul in his life was so much glorying in the cross that he reached a determination which he expressed in the first Corinthians chapter 2 verses 2. Verse 2, I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. All his message was to know nothing but the cross. Nothing but the cross. Exalt the cross. Exalt the cross. That's everything. So it was one of Paul's fundamental convictions that apart from Christ, nothing could come out right ever. Man left to himself <clears throat> is doomed. This is a moral universe, and God made it so. And sinful man reaps the reward of sin. His only hope, faith in the person and work of Jesus Christ. He says, in effect, you know why I glory in the cross? Three reasons. Ready for this? Reason number one, the cross changed my relationship to the world. The cross changed my relationship to the world. The one thing that I think people face today is a terrible pain of being locked into the world system. Have you ever realized that your life is just sort of an endless, meaningless circle? People today face purposelessness. I always think of the words of a woman. Life must go on. I forget just why. It's meaningless. And then your life is not only meaningless, but it's guided by passion, which is such a cruel, cruel master. Have you experienced that? When you are so sick of life and want to quit, do you ever get sick of having your mind in the gutter all the time and seemingly unable to get out of there? That's how the world works. Our thoughts are low thoughts, selfish thoughts. Our life doesn't seem to go anywhere. And then there's another thing that I think that haunts people in the world. It's the past. We can't seem to get free from our sin. The Bible says we never have to a clear conscience. Guilt just bangs away all the time. We can't forget the past. We have no sense of forgiveness. The day that we put in our faith in Jesus Christ, we have an entirely new consciousness. And all of a sudden, we die to that whole system, that evil system, and we are alive to God. It's as if we have, we're being translated into a new dimension of life. Paul puts it this way, for our citizenship is in heaven. You know what? I actually exist as a heavenly being. You know, when you start thinking about it, that is true. Everything we love in is in heaven, right? Our Father's there. Our dead, he's dead. Insensitive, insensitive to God is what it means. But we know God and how exciting it is. And Paul says, wow, I glory in the cross because you know what? The cross cut me off from the world, made me alive to God. And you know what? The world is no longer interesting to us. Paul uh, himself had plenty of religious things to boast about. On one occasion, he listed the highlights of his spiritual resume. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee. As for zeal, persecuting the church. As for legalistic righteousness, faultless. That's what Ephesians 3, verses 5 to 6 says. 
And what more could anyone ask for? Paul had all the right connections. He came from a good family, attended the best schools, and believed the most orthodox theology. The man had as much to boast about as anyone else. We have things to boast about ourselves. But if he had wanted it, but when Paul came to need Jesus Christ, he realized that he had nothing, nothing at all to boast about. All his religious accomplishments were a load of rubbish. God forbid that I should boast about any of them. There is only one thing in all the universe worth boasting about. The Bible allows for a single exception. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the boasting that saves. The surprising, surprising thing about his boast is that in the ancient world, crucifixion was nothing to boast about. It was nothing. In an earlier chapter, he noted that the cross was an offense to the Romans and a curse to the Jews. And the New Testament scholar F. F. Bruce concludes that the object of Paul's present boast was, by all ordinary standards in, of his day, the most ignoble <clears throat> of all objects. A matter of unrelieved shame, not boasting. It is difficult after 16 centuries and more during the cross has been a sacred symbol. To realize the unspeakable horror and loathing which the very mention or thought of the cross provoked in Paul's day. The word crooks was unmentionable in polite Roman society. Even sort of even as them. Hang him on the unlucky tree. In the eastern provinces of the empire of the Greek, the word staros or cross must have inspired comparable dread and disgust to its Latin equivalent. Thus, it was shocking for Paul even to mention the cross, let alone boast about it. If anything, one would expect the first Christians to deny that Jesus died on the cross, or at most, if they were honest, to admit this fact only with the greatest reluctance. Far from being reluctant, however, Paul was eager to boast about the cross. That which the average Roman citizen, regardless as an object of shame, disgrace, and even disgust, was for Paul his pride, boasting and glory. The object of our boast or glory fills our horizons, engrosses our attention, and absorbs our time and energy. In a word, our glory is our obsession. But why are Christians so obsessed with the cross? Why do we revel in it? What makes it something to boast about? First, the cross means the death of sin. Paul's full statement runs as follows. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. By the world is meant the world without God in all its vanity. The world represents the tyranny of sin over humanity. Even a human being is born in sin and continues to sin. Even Paul himself was in bondage to sin. He was enslaved to the world with all its wicked ways. The crucifixion of Jesus Christ, however, struck a mortal blow to sin's worldly power. It was as if sin was nailed to the cross with Jesus. He died on the cross, not only to atone for sin, but ultimately to bring it to an end. Christians boast in the cross because it means the beginning of the end of our sins. Sin no longer holds us 
in its death grip. More and more, we are becoming dead to the temptations and enticements of sin. One day, when Christ returns, he will be done with it once and for all. One of the best hymns of the church is based on the words we have been talking about. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. The hymn is called When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. It was written by Isaac Watts, and it is a boast about the only thing in all the world worth boasting about. It rules out all other forms of boasting as God forbid them. It speaks to the love that flowed from the cross along with the blood of Christ. Finally, it ends with a prayer of commitment, commitment to Christ. Make the commitment your own. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his hand, his, his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did ever such love and sorrow meet? Or thorns or posts, so rich a crown. His dying crimson like a robe spreads over his body on the tree. Then am I dead to all the globe, and all the globe is dead to me. Were the whole realm of nature mine? That was a present far too small. Love, so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life. My own. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you.